Welcome folks to Human Sexuality and today we're talking about our first chapter which delves into the social history of sexuality and human sexuality uh, throughout the globe. Uh, largely today we'll be talking about the human sexuality continuum, the human sexuality continuum and this is a concept that will appear a couple of times throughout the course. What we mean by a continuum is we're talking about a range of something, a range of possibilities concerning sex and sexuality. And so the human sexuality continuum, it captures a range of human sexual activity and it captures this range of human sexual behavior and thought and activity throughout time and throughout history. And so really it is a way to distinguish liberal to moderate to conservative human sexual practices, behaviors, and attitudes. So unique civilizations, individuals, and societies, they are all at different data points, if you will, or at varying points along that range over time. So some individuals, in addition to some civilizations and societies, are more conservative in their approach to sexuality. Some are more moderate, maybe blending more liberal and conservative practice, and then some are decidedly much, much more liberal. So with that in mind, as we begin the course, this allows us to realize that there is no singular, no universal human sexuality. There's no one right way to be sexual. There's no one professed human sexual uh, attitude or behavior that we can see throughout time replicated in the vast majority of societies. And so that's what the range, the human sexuality continuum is all about. And so typically what I do in a face-to-face -face course is I draw this sort of line and on one end of the line we have the more liberal approaches to human sexuality, that end of the range, that end of the continuum. And then on the sort of right side, that's the more conservative, uh, if you will, approach, or those are the more conservative aspects. And that end, if you will, uh, is the conservative end of the human sexuality continuum. So we can start by looking at things from the more liberal end of the continuum. And often I refer to this as the open end, or where, again, you have more liberal attitudes and behaviors concerning human sexuality. So on this more open liberal end toward the left side of the range of the continuum, sex is seen as a natural part of life and it is not shunned or morally judged. Uh, there are fewer restrictions and fewer no-nos and taboos concerning sex, sexuality and sexual values and behaviors. And so people can be much freer to experiment sexually, to uh, adopt unique sexual attitudes and behaviors that are their own uh, that don't necessarily have to conform to any one sort of universal idea or ideal. Uh, sex is openly part of the culture and it's celebrated in cultures that lean toward this open end of the range, this open end of the continuum. So good examples uh, would include the ancient Egyptians as well as the ancient, Greece, ancient Greeks and uh, the ancient Romans. And you'll be learning about some of this as well looking at uh, the videos for this week. Uh, also, early Mesopotamian history is a good example of more liberal, more open practices to human sexuality. So often on this end of the range too, sex and spirituality can conjoin, they can combine. And so in a lot of these early civilizations in particular, like the ancient Mesopotamians, uh, sexual practice could be a way to confirm uh, religious faith, it could be a way to uh, bring about the blessings and the bounty of the gods. And so it's a very unique way of thinking about uh, how much sexuality was embraced and not repressed in these cultural milieus. Marriage is not the only, I, you could probably imagine that marriage itself is not the only uh, acceptable environment or realm within which sexual activity can occur. So sex could take place and often did take place extramaritally or having nothing to do with marriage. Sex was seen as, again, a natural part of life that people would ordinarily assume, again, with fewer restrictions and prohibitions. Also on this end of the range, you tended to find societies and individuals definitely that were much more aligned with female empowerment narratives and empowerment for women. And so often in societies of 
this sort of liberal approach to human sexuality, uh, female sexuality was also revered and encouraged and was noted. Uh, it wasn't simply seen as men only having sex or male pleasure was not the only defining characteristic or principle concerning human sexuality. Now also, of course, on the far right, the more conservative or closed end of the continuum, uh, sexuality is much more morally based. It's much more morally regulated. Uh, in a lot of respects, it, with respect to societies that lean toward that end, uh, is seen as unclean. It's seen as competing with a wholesome, good, healthy relationship with God for societies and individuals and cultures that were much more religiously based. And so, uh, as you can imagine, if a culture or a civilization leans this way, particularly if we think about the ancient Hebrews or the early Christians, if they lean this way, they again tend to see the moral basis uh, as being fundamental to how we approach human sexuality and also that it needs to be regulated, sex needs to be regulated because it may compete with a healthy relationship with God. And so in some cases, even in old texts, the idea is that, well, God is the ultimate lover. That's the person that you're ultimately supposed to uh, be thinking about and not thinking about a life partner. So uh, in a variety of respects, in this more conservative approach, societies often uh, went to great lengths to talk about and preach about in many respects limiting openness towards sex, the amount of practice or sexual practice and behavior that people should have because again these were seen as positive for how those societies and of course the individuals therein were expected to live their lives. So again this continuum has a vast amount and accounts for a vast amount of human behavior You've got a lot of societies and cultures that are sort of also a blend of those liberal and conservative practices. If you think of the modern day United States, if you think, for instance, of ancient uh, China or ancient India, those are good examples of society, societies, if you will, that borrowed from both liberal and conservative approaches. Uh, Native American cultures and civilizations are also ones where, again, with a vast uh, maelstrom and variety of tribes and approaches that tribes had to a variety of affairs, including politics and sex and gender. Again, it's easy for all of that to be summed up as to say that Native American cultures and civilizations tended to be sort of at the midpoint of blending a melding of liberal and conservative approaches to human sexuality. So with that, this continuum allows us to sort of get things going and helps us begin. One thing to keep in mind as we go through the course and as we start looking from this continuum standpoint. Keep in mind that the continuum is not fair or democratic. It's not, well, you have your time to be conservative and now it's our time to be liberal. It's, it's not really like that. So with that in mind, uh, the norms and the behaviors and the practices of one time, they may not fit at another time, even during one individual's life. And so what you may have found at one point in your life was shunned or looked at more negatively, perhaps talking, for instance, about oral sex. Uh, now it's talked about much more openly and it's much more easily understood as a viable sexual practice for a variety of reasons. Uh, the same could also be said for extramarital sex and extramarital relationships. Again, over time, discussions of these matters have become much more open. Hall passes, for instance, is a, a good code word for two code words for describing, for instance, that openness to some kind of extramarital event or experience. So again, at one point in time, perhaps society around you and perhaps you yourself thought one way where uh, perhaps it was much more aligned with one uh, more liberal assumption or more conservative assumption. But again, over time, a lot of what can happen involves change, not only for individuals, but certainly for the society that surrounds them. And so that's where Again, uh, the notion of democracy, the notion of fairness concerning these ideas and these behaviors doesn't really enter in because, again, things shift and things change for a variety of political, social, and economic reasons. So that also brings to mind another characteristic of the continuum in that this range is stable and flexible. We're always going to see a range, a wide spectrum of human sexual activity and behavior within any society and certainly across societies and over time. 
So that is a stable attribute of human behavior, that we're going to have that range, but at the same time within an individual's life and within a society there's going to be change, there's going to be flexibility, there's going to be recognition of that over time. So ultimately what the continuum is is a tool for understanding. It's a way for us to make sense out of the vast majority, the great diversity of human sexual behavior, attitudes, and thought that we see in our own lifetime and certainly throughout the course this semester.